as I said you, one of the major criteria of any design in analog is to get the circuit working which has gain. Okay, that is our most important thing amplification, that is what we do in analog circuit. So, we want to amplify an input signal which may be very, very small in many cases like in mobile and others the antenna gives a very, very small signals and we want to amplify that. So, our major activity in any analog design is amplifications. So, all our effort initially will be how to do a good amplifier. Now, what is this word good? Good means what good? Okay. So, we will like to see uh, how do you design a desired amplifier characteristics instead of saying good. There are yes, I agree with you filters for example, but if you see a active filters there will be some uh, unity gain amplifiers, gain does not mean essentially even the attenuators have a minus dB gains. Okay. So, in some sense amplification is a conversion of some input to the output in some form, okay. you have a right valid issue. However, however, here the circuits which I am showing probably have gains. There are three kinds of amplifiers shown to, shown by me. One is a standard amplifier which all of us know. So, these are three amplifiers shown here. The first one which you are seeing here is essentially an amplifier in which there is a uh, some kind of an active device. In general, it may be n channel device uh, for a MOSFET which has an input and it allows uh, you know some kind of transconductance through this at the output. So, it converts this voltage into some current and through this load current flows in this please remember in a circuit in a arm only one current can flow. So, if this is my output arm only one current can flow. So, whatever is current coming from power supply must go through the driver either. So, these two currents must be balancing every now and then the driver current must be equal to the load current because there cannot be two currents in the same arm. So, this device which is shown here shows that uh, I L is equal to I D S N and uh, whatever I am showing here the lower part of this device in case of N channel it is source is grounded to V S S. Now, this word V S S will qualify a little later. We do not say it is ground always what I mean why V S S because we may not say it is ground always, okay. but in right now let us say it is ground and the load is connected to V D T. So, obviously, this is a standard amplifier. This device can could be bipolar transistor, it could be a MOS transistor. And in any case, I, I R drop here uh, will actually provide you the output voltage. Okay. So, very simple amplifier. The other version could be you may have a P channel device or PNP transistor, and since you want to keep that power supply same positive VDD, so this is then become source then becomes drain for p channel device and the load is downwards and same method one can say the output is now. The reason is that I am always saying current can always flow from power supply to the ground irrespective of carriers is that clear whether it is electrons or holes though they do opposite uh, they do move opposite, but the net current electrical current external to that is always in unidirectional from positive potential to ground or negative potential that cannot be changed this is Kirchhoff law and nothing much can be done on it okay. still stands perfect. So, this is a p channel device so same technique. So, one can have an n channel device or can have a p channel device both for amplifiers and if we make a combination of the two uh, which is a p channel device and n channel device connected to the gates we call it complementary MOS or CMOS amplifier. So, this is essentially to some extent we are now saying that each transistor behaves as load for some time is that correct. Initially may be this is driver this may be acting like a load after some time this may act like a driver and this may act or you may say superposition. You have n channel amplifier superposed on p channel amplifier each acting load for the other one is that clear. So, this is a possibility which we can use and the advantage we shall see soon why CMOS because we have already seen CMOS is one technology which digital has adopted till as I said technology node right now is 16 nanometers. So, since every circuit is digital uh, 
which is marketed in heavily at least I said 20 percent is analog that means 80 percent is digital. So, obviously, we someone who has majority or power will govern. So, digital people govern and because of that CMOS is a standard technology do what we. We may change materials for some reasons for some device or uh, some circuit requirements that we may have silicon carbide, silicon germanium, silicon germanium carbide, gallium arsenide, indium arsenide, indium arsenide, gallium arsenide mixtures many things can be done, but CMOS may still remain. And as I said uh, many years for last so many years 2030 CMOS is going to stick. In any analog design we find there are few parameters of relevance, three of course are most common, some others we will add later. The first of course is transconductance, what does that mean from the input voltage how much is the output current gets modified by the input signal essentially called transconduction okay. from voltage to current converters are essentially transconducting. Okay. So, the first and most important parameter for an amplifier is the GM transconductance, we will see what values we get in real life. Then the next very very important characteristics of a uh, amplifier is the output resistance. In the case of normal amplifiers which you have seen just now for example, this you know this load or this this may be a resistor, but in NCMA there is no real resistor there. However, you can connect a load afterwards. So, you can have something like this as external load. But the way circuit operates generally in integrated circuit there is no real resistance put any time. Whatever is the output resistance of this is useful for the next stage connections. Okay. So, what the next stage input resistance is is the output resistance of the last stage and that we call as R0. Okay. So, in an integrated circuit not that R L will never be used, but in general connections are not through load actually, load is output resistance itself is acting like a load. So, having said so, the second parameter of interest for me is the output resistance for the transistor or the amplifier which is R 0 and the third and the most important for analog is the noise this and the word I am keep using this word very important when we come to noise we shall talk about is input referred noise though noise can be at the any node, okay, but we call it input referred noise and that is very major criteria of design. How much is the tolerable input referred noise? How many dBms or dBs corresponding to given signal? How much essentially it converts into what value we are more popularly known signal to noise ratio? How much is this noise at input to noise at output ratio we can get is very crucial for any amplifier. Okay. So, this input referred noise is essentially is a basic noise available without external anything and say is, if that is what is going to change or increase then your purpose of amplification may not be as good. Okay. And the most important other than the gain factor which is the first three essentially uh, first two essentially gives the gain, second third one is the noise wor worrisome. And the third which is the most uh, equivalently most important from digital they say speed, how fast the circuit is working 6 gigahertz, 4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz. Here is what we say equivalently bandwidths, how much is the bandwidth that means up to which frequency gain is constant or reasonable okay, is we say it is bandwidth. So, for an amplifier we are always designing for a gain, noise and bandwidth is that are three parameters which we wish to control. If we are able to control these three parameters strictly then I have design done for my requirement is that if I cannot control or it so happens trying to control one I lose something else then I say Baba that is with this technology with this this is possible no more okay. that is we say figure of merit end of it. Okay. Before that how much play we can have 
as in the case of digital I, I think you are already learning and you know much about is we can trade off power and speed increase power that means increase currents the capacitor charges faster or discharges faster so speed is higher you reduce the power reduce the currents slows down okay. however we can meet both slightly by adjusting areas this is the game which we will play in digital here we have to play game for gain and frequency and third which is not visible immediately is the noise which may actually control both okay. Okay. and therefore these three are very crucial parameters in our analog designs uh, here is another slide these are still generic we will come to it today most on just a little bit so that you know what exactly I am talking about here is a differential amplifier shown to you we will actually design and define this semester there are two n channel devices with two loads and uh, this is a biasing current which is called current source and I, we have just named them 1, 2, 3, 4 okay, areas. So, for example, there is R when we say it's constant, there is nothing called constant in circuits or devices or in integral circuits, R may drift, change. Okay. So, one possibility is there is a variation in R. We also say the transistors are identical for DFAM. This is the only statement we make. In reality, M1, M2 may not be identical in many ways its threshold may not be same, its size may not be same, W bias may not be same and therefore, they are not identical. So, there is some kind of a offset relationship, GM it will be related to them. So, GMs may not be same for either M1 and M2. Okay. So, that is another issue which may have to create and of course, this so called constant current source may not be constant okay. and if that changes, the bias point is changing. So, if the GM and everything else will change. So, if you look at these variations 1, 4 and 5 that is V t change drift in this and R values it may change the operating position uh, of the amplifier. If you look at the 3 that is essentially the offset because of the non W by L equivalence then it may increase this change may increase actually 2 devices may be offset by some value. We believe that they are same, but we are not actually. However, do not worry in real life offset can be cancelled some way or the other. Okay. It is not that there is no way we cannot get rid of offsets. What is the price we will pay? As I increase any I, as I improve anything I will have to pay for it and that payment may be in the external hard, extra hardware which I may have to put or extra power I may have to pump to get rid of some of these. But that is not that we cannot do that and we will see some of the offset techniques we will use later. 2 and 5 which is essentially again threshold variation as well as offsets in GM particularly in GM variation causing because of in M1, M2 same way the change in current in the biasing currents may actually lead to change in noise and noise is a very crucial factor as I said to you. If you look at the last uh, this one we say 1 change in R, 2 change in GMs and 5 change in current biasing current all of them can change the bandwidths. Okay. So, the is that point clear why design is an issue because in design I will be given a specification, but please take from me if anyone gives you say that I want a gain of 100 uh, you say I cannot design for you. Okay. You say what is the maximum minimum in between the gain can you can expect. Okay. You say okay, in a range of 80 to 100 I, I am fine with it. So, I can design a circuit which may give a gain 80 to 100, but it may not be always 100 or always 80. So, any time a specs is given to you give design this it is not doable. Okay. So, one a spec must come from a customer which is doable and that is one say range must be specified. Okay. So, I say okay, the minimum gain I expect is 100. So, if it is 120 I do not mind, but 100 is minimum bandwidth I want is so many megahertz, yeah that is the minimum I expect, but you do not say no it is 2.73 megahertz or 2.73 gig. I cannot do this any design way. Okay. There is no way I can control specific values. Okay. If I try one and then I other I may not be able to control. So, I always will say you give me some margins in designs. So, this is the major difference 
in the analysis which we do and the design we do. Okay. But to do a design we must know analysis as a how will a design, but the focus should be this that we have to attain specs within a given range that is the trick of the design issue. Okay. If you look at the other part which I said gain and bandwidth I just said it, but they will come back later also. I will not go into very strong detail just I will show you there are two kinds of noise in fact three kinds of noise, but at least two shown here. One is called thermal noise which is always present because of the incessant motion of carriers okay, which is called the thermal noise and uh, there are other names also in thermal noise uh, related names short noise and other but I take it thermal as a common name. And, uh, the way we will define when I talk about thermal noise, it can be given by as we call 4 KTR volt square by hertz and this is the function SVF is a noise function, we will define it little later. The other noise which is very dominant at low frequencies is called flicker noise or 1 upon F noise. The word 1 upon F came because the noise essentially decreases with frequency linearly. There are noises now available which decreases by 1 upon f square okay, post office noise as they call. We will see that when the turn comes, okay. but see simple first models are the frequency as the frequency increases the noise linearly falls. This noise area or this noise is called flicker noise. There is a point at which this flicker noise is exactly equal to the thermal noise and that is called corner frequency. We can define this later. Uh, you can see the figure has been shown here. This is a noise versus frequency. Initially, there is a 1 upon f noise at low frequencies, and somewhere beyond fc, thermal noise takes over because this term here, volt square per hertz, will actually start dominating over because 1 upon f may go down further and the thermal noise will take over. So, we say at the point where thermal noise takes over from 1 upon f, we say corner frequency for noise and that is given by some kind of this function and we will see to it how do you control these values. Okay. Noise is some way connected to gm you can see clearly it has a term oxide capacitance per unit area, the width and the length of the transistor and of course, the temperature at which you are working. Of course, all noises are generally temperature dependent. So, if you are working on a circuit which is at higher temperature 55 degree centigrade or 70 degree centigrade which is a military standard requirement may be 125 degree centigrade. In that case your noise will be higher definitely higher nothing much can be done because KT dependent. Okay. So, noise is a temperature dependent and therefore, in normal circuit what will you do to reduce noise cool it if possible as much as possible or remove the heat from the circuit as fast as possible. If you can do this heat sinking then you can operate the device at relatively lower noise. So, where it will be the lowest in real life if I put a liquid helium jacket everywhere 4 degree Kelvin then yeah in my all noise, but then suddenly you will figure out GM also will not be there. Okay. So, then the amplifier may not be available. But as such noise can be minimized by reducing the temperature or what we call ambient temperature. Do not look at too much into expression which will anyway derive later. Here is a small amplifier shown here the idea why I wrote those expression is to explain this figure. What we say that each resistor or a device which also in a way is resistor contributes to the noise okay, and it gives equivalent current sources across each of them. So, if R d there will be a I n R d average square current shown here and this is I n device average square these two currents sources are available with each device and the resistor. So, as many devices or resistors you have that many current sources noise current sources are available and noise currents currents multiplied by resistors available will give you noise outputs. So, larger the I n squares or equivalently V n's then you will have larger noise outputs. Okay, is that clear and one can see uh, some way they are strongly related to G m is that correct and therefore, 
as you look for the gains, as you look for the bandwidths, keep mind that your noise is also getting affected simultaneously. So, in many designs, this criteria of noise is little ahead and therefore, we do not pay so much attention as normal case, but in real IC designs now, probably you may have to actually start looking first noise and then say, okay, now how, what can I do. Okay. So, these issues are very relevant and therefore, should be appreciated. This beta of course, exactly is W by L related, we will see that the device parameters essentially decides the noise factors. We will come to noise again because that is a very relevant area for analog designs, little more in detail. So, if you are an analog designer, what are you looking at? Okay. Uh, how much things you should consider? So, few things, not necessarily it is all of it, but most of it I have written. Most analog circuits, if you see, they have signals alternating, AC signals. Signals are not necessarily unidirect, uni DC. They may be varying, but not DC. They are not only plus, but they are also minus, like an AC signal riding on zero voltage. Okay. That means, signals can be positive or negative. So, is power supply can be positive or negative in our designs. Okay. VDD and that VSS word can be then minus VDD also or my, we call it minus value of power supply or any other value need not be same minus. This is called dual rail, one rail at plus, one rail at minus. Compared to digital design, all analog circuits always have dual rail designs because many a time minus VSS or minus value at the lower end may help. Okay. In the case of analog, I have already shown you IV characteristics earlier, but maybe we will show you again. The biasing point where you bias decides the dv0 by dv, okay, that is the gain. So, where do you bias is very crucial because that will decide the gm, that will decide r0, that will decide everything for you. So, bias point control is very, very crucial in analog designs. So, as I said, if that drifts, everything drifts. So, one is to worry about bias points operating. In our second year course, we always thought, okay, ek bar ek register laga diya ya, ho gaya bias, fix bias kar diya, aisa nahi hai. So, you have to do some tricks to keep that constant. Okay. Also, for normal amplifiers, we do not want gain to vary because otherwise, you know, for a some signals, it is something, some, you want gain to be constant or to say V O V in characteristics in the region of interest should be linear, D V 0 by D V in should be constant, linear. Okay. So, that is one important thing and therefore, these circuits are many times called linear circuits because there we assume gains are constant, D V 0 by D V in relationship is linear and therefore, the circuit themselves are called linear circuits. Okay. It does not mean that in real life there will be everything linear. In fact, the whole life of every one of us or every creature of this world is extremely non-linear. How much non-linearity you can control uh, or how much idiosyncrasies you control, that is what your outputs or nature will be. Okay. Every one of us is idios have different idiosyncrasies, we are very non-linear in nature. Same inputs does not evoke same response. Okay. Some may be right now feeling, why is teaching? but still sitting here. Okay. Some may say he is giving two trivial. Everyone has that same thing I am saying, but you may have different perspectives. That is what I say non-linear issues. Okay. So, reality is non-linear. So, how do we control non-linear systems? This fourth as I said already said, all analog circuit are extremely noisy. So, they should be somehow made uh, noise tolerant but they are very low noise tolerant. Small change will immediately show at the output, do not do anything, it will come out. Okay. So, that is the one worry for a designer. We must see to it that the drifts are small. I have just shown you earlier figures that drifts can cause what? Everything can be changed. So, drift has to be minimized is one consideration in every design. anything which changes is a drift. This value drift, it can be plus or minus, drift can be either. Okay. 
standard cells are essentially block design a priori design fab tested and then their square block is shown to you and gate two inputs one output this currents the speed and internally what is not told to you this is the standard cell okay. Pro there is no real problem with digital circuit even if I reduce the power supply we are going to 0 0.6 as I say okay maybe 0 0.4 someday because we are we, we are happy that 1 0 still can be reachable so it is ok in analog if you reduce the voltage the current reduces and gm is nowhere then okay gm is essentially <coughs> proportional to i what formula it will root or a square or half whatever you see later but it is function of ideas now if you change this the current goes your gain goes bandwidth goes everything goes and then now as i say in the new technologies when you are asking us to work on a very low biased circuits we insist that at least do not tell us that you will work on 0.4 volt. We will have our own power supply and we will work on our own circuit part. So, there is a power management unit on every mix signal because analog cannot function at 0.4. It okay. is a no, you are closer so much to the noise that I will only see noise. Okay. So, I will not like to work at very low biases though it is fantastic because it will give low powers. So, designing a low power analog is itself a big challenge because that is the game one has to play. Because overall chip cannot be uh, you know one part is heated so much and the other is not so much then there is another issue will come in this. This temperature gradient it will set and it will start varying the digital part faster. So, there are issues in placement of analog blocks also where do you keep them. Okay. So, there are many issues when you put analog with digital because as I say low power is the game everyone wants low power which is true means uh, low power is the game these days or rather I, I always like to call that low energy systems. We are not very keen about voltages or powers we should be worried about energy. Okay. Essentially I am saying you can have large currents but lower voltage or lower larger voltage lower currents still energy and for a shorter time. So, as long as you manage that you are still in a low energy systems and that is more important. So, to summarize what I said in to stabilize your DC biasing you may have to either increase the power supply or tune the bias currents vary it some way ok we will see current mirrors do that. The word PM is very important we will see come to it later phase margin one of the major worry in analog circuit is phase uh, relationship between outputs and inputs. If you have seen a transfer function in a control theory we keep talking of margins sometimes in time scale we say jitters all of us are jittery when something does not go well that we want in circuits when they jitter it gives noise phase noise. Okay. So, what we do is that may change the stability of the system. So, you may have to do some uh, some kind of pole compensation, pole zero compensation or some way you must split the poles or whatever technique feedback systems are therefore, necessary and you must get the stable circuit. We must work on architectures which are constant GM because if GM changes as I say everything changes. So, any design you do see to it your block has constant gm that should not be i may change the value of a gm at my will but once fixed it should not change that's what design is all about constant gm <laughs> which also is required for good stability now we know this offset part which i said if the two arm of the circuit has equal offset <coughs> or equal change in a differential mode something which is common may get cancelled and that is what the defense theory is all about and therefore, offset can be minimized if not making 0 at least by using defense okay. and we will see that is why all differential amplifiers are so common in analog designs. For comparator designs you need very high gains so that any degradation would not affect much its operation because comparator shifts A to D it converts. Okay. So, the gain of a comparator should be very high 
so that any marginal change should not reflect 1 0 it should give immediately and such degradation effect should be minimized. So, when I say gain I am suddenly looking at gm and when I say look gm I go upward and see everyone is hurted by, hurt by change in gm. So, the issues are essentially device related and circuit related and their interactions. So, when I design you must remember that design is not just analysis a slide I think I made other day. What is circuit analysis in my opinion someone asked me well we can have a larger circuit which can be decomposed or reduced into smaller blocks and each block is manageable in designs ok that is analysis how we do it. We do not solve simultaneously huge network you can solve on a spice or a <coughs> simulator, but normally when I analyze I do not have such large papers to write so big expressions. So, what I keep doing is use blocks see to it that its input output always matches that is the trick we use and always reduce into blocks and design it. And these blocks should be designed with very simple models for transistors or any other device we use. If they are too complicated you cannot do circuit analysis easily. Okay, so, you need to have very simple models, okay, but relatively accurate because otherwise why I calculate gain 100 and it comes to be 10,000 then I am nowhere. Okay. So, it has to be relatively accurate, but much simpler to handle. So, why do you really need then the in so called simple models? Yeah, they do give some values which can then act as a first assumption values for large signal or large value analysis. So, where to start ok that is the issue. Each circuit has one unique solution this design uh, this analysis if you show me this is input this is output this is how it relates unique solutions. Now, if I do a design how it differs in most cases you synthesize the design by your past experience that is why to protect this this word IP has appeared if I design it is mine and you cannot take pay for and take it. Okay. So, this is the uh, from the past experience and since one does not know exact solution you do lot of iterative solution. So, you actually have to do extensive analysis to really design a circuit. When you say extensive which means by manually it is very difficult how many times I will do 100 times same thing just tweaking things. So, it will be very difficult. So, I need some support from other than me. So, I will see what it is. Given specs there can be many solutions whereas, in the case of given a circuit solution is fixed in this case there is a requirement and I may get through many ways ok and that is the designers issue. Now, one interesting feature which I wish to tell you all as an engineer if you want to become good uh, all engineers require skills engineering is not only analysis engineering designers engineers should be good designers and they require skills. <coughs> now, how they can be achieved and the word I use is Einstein in way. What is Einstein in way? Einstein, Einstein was once asked that when he was doing problems in general relativity one of his uh, person student in his class or rather his colleague that time he asked him how do you really solve such a intricate complicated problems or how do you approach that he says just by doing it. So, to attempt anything just do it that is the only way you can do some things ok. And long as you do not do it you do not know what to do it and therefore, you must do it that is the Einstein. So, please follow your failures are good enough they will teach you many more things and next time you will be more accurate and more correct. So, this is my suggestion to all those who wish to remain in even in finance only this may be equally true. Uh, some of the building blocks which uh, I am going to design in this course I may design current sources, current mirrors, single stage amplifier, differential amplifiers, operational amplifiers variety of operational amplifiers there may be a cascode amplif op amps there may be what is OTA means operational, operational transconductance amplifier GM related. So, OTAs then I may design comparators voltage references 
I did not specifically said the lower one why I said I will show data converters this part though is required since there is a mixed signal course going on I will not talk about ADCs and DACs in this course ok. I may instead talk about oscillators and frequency synthesizers PLLs maybe I will talk more. And then the switch capacitor circuit these are essentially also part of mixed signal but since they are filter realizations we will talk about some simple filters if not very complicated filters active filters as I say using switch capacitors ok which is what technology will appreciate. So, this is something blocks this, this course will address to hopefully by the end of the course you learn enough that all of this you yourself can design to a given spec ok. So, please remember we start always with trivials and then build on this this is how designers do do small pakka another small pakka keep doing till you reach your ultimate aims okay. many of you have already done this or hopefully should have done in your second year course at least ok so this much so far is more generalities we say ok this is what analog design is all about and uh, as I say our course name itself is CMOS that means there is a MOS transistor sitting somewhere though I know again third year student yaha honge jo galti se honge yaha pe I have taught them devices so they cannot say MOS device was not taught others can. So, unke liye jo others may be here I may start with little bit of basics on MOS transistor because I keep saying you analog design is more between interaction of device and a circuit. So, not knowing devices will not help you in a good analog design is that clear to you whereas, in digital you do not need to know device technology or anything in fact, nothing you should know you can still design ok. The best designers who, who do not know anything so they design better. The problem with uh, designers is essentially I said it it is a iterative or too long a process to do. Please take from me in analog design what is the problem? There is a very famous uh, story or may famous statements made in many books, many journals many years ago that if you put n number of monkeys say 100 and uh, give them pen, pencil, paper and ask them to sketch anything what they do even then they cannot write a legible book irrespective. They say they are our ancestors, but even then they can even with hundreds of them. Same way if you ask a monkey who is related why a monkey is used because they are next to us. So, ok if we can do probably they also can is the if you ask a monkey and give him a spice tool and say design this circuit you may keep putting hit at no time an optimal circuit output will come. So, essentially in special that probably may happen in digital due regards, but in analog you have to use your brain ev in manual intervention is a part of analog design ok. So, intelligently only you can do things ok if you want to leave this leave analog ok because that is the difference uh, I would not say I mean as I say I am just overreacting on that, but just to say a fun of part in that that uh, analog designs requires knowledge of technology to great extent much more devices and of course, your circuit background has to be always good for any circuit course in electrical engineering ok. So, we start with the basics of MOS transistor quickly today maybe we will finish that. So, that next time we start with the real amplifiers a MOS transistor uh, as I say circuit view of a device is very relevant to us to for a device first we will talk and then we will say how it circuit people realize it what for them is the value here ok. I have only a MOS transistor so for me I say ok I have some sub substrate I created some regions I have some gate some drain some source which technology can give me. So, I got a MOS transistor, but how does it work and if it works how a circuit man knows how does it work. So, that relationship what circuit wants from a device is what this few uh, some tens of 20 slide will show you how does specs of a circuit is controlled from the device parameters ok. We will not go further down how technology manages that 
maybe that is also relevant someday if now at least today but uh, it's okay so here is a typical mass transistor shown to you this is my substrate okay which is p type so it is an n channel device shown to you i have two regions diffused in that or implanted in that is source and drain n plus this is a two dimensional picture but as i said you earlier also many times mos transistor is a three dimensional device i don't know i don't have anything to maybe this okay at least it has third dimension so if this is my source this is my drain this width is the third dimension so what you are seeing is only this cross section but there is a width part in this okay so that is called w this is the length this is w so a mos transistor is not a two dimensional device as in most cases bipolars are of course the current bipolars are also not two dimensional but earlier what we used to do pn pn pns they were only two dimensionals now mos transistors are three dimensional however they are four terminal devices not just three as one thinks that is the difference which you should understand so the first terminal is source the other terminal which is output as we call drain on this n regions there is a thin insulator layer put here in 90% cases or 95% cases is silicon dioxide of last 15 years silicon dioxide has been replaced by hafnium or hafnium nitride oxides or zirconium we are trying many high k dielectrics when the channel length goes down okay but assume it's a good dielectric and for most purposes we say it is still silicon dioxide unless said otherwise okay now this is sio2 or whatever insulator you put what is the advantage of insulator <coughs> insulator does not pass any dc current okay so it's a good insulator typical insulation strength of a dielectric like siu2 it has a 10 to power 7 volt per centimeter as the dielectric field at which it will break down okay air breakdown is a 30 volt per centimeter so you can imagine what i am talking about okay. so this is my gate and there is a substrate contact which i call bulk b sometimes i calls s once a while but since source is there s so let's call it bulk and uh, so there are four terminals in a mos transistor if you show a equivalent circuit for that this is drain this is source gate is separated from this because of insulator and this is my bulk contact okay the symbols are known if the arrow is in it is n channel arrow out it is p channel okay if it is a p channel device this will be n substrate <coughs> and p plus p plus source drains the only thing will happen is whatever voltage we apply in n channels the opposite polarity should go for p channel for the similar performance so the case one vs vg vd vs vb all are zeros if everything is zero there is no current between drain and source irrespective no current means no current because kirchhoff law says if there is no source there is no output. unless of course you can say noise but that is source otherwise there is absolutely if everything is grounded no outputs everything is zero uh, so we said transistor is off nothing is coming out okay in current technology node say less than 90 nanometer to or less even for that this is valid because kirchhoff law cannot be faulted at no supply no currents respectively there are cases may be smaller current because something else but otherwise if voltages are grounded no currents this is a trivial case but very relevant case to say in real life therefore device can never be switched off is that point clear because these conditions can never be met is that clear why i showed you this slide just to show you in reality this case cannot be achieved okay though i mean possible you can always take a transistor and ground and check okay but in circuits this will not be 
relevant case it is called trivials, we will not go for trivials. The case 2, let us say B g s is 0. So, gate is still firstly we say ground source. So, what we say source is our reference voltage, it could have been anywhere, but over the years right from Shockley down everyone thinks source is why the word source came in the device here? It sources the carriers okay, N or P whichever way, in channel it sources electrons, in P channel it sources holes. Drain D is called because it picks up, it drains, so that is why it was given a name drain. Now, this word gate essentially means if you open or close something else should happen the output currents. So, it was given a name gate and this B has to be given because it started with the bulk substrate where we say B. So, right now we say V s is 0, we also say bulk is grounded, but P say we apply V d s. No gate voltage, no source voltage, no bulk voltage, but we apply V d s which is positive let us say. I d s is 0 in ideal conditions, you may find that uh, we, there is no since gate is 0, we thought that it should not give any current to you. But in reality, there is there are two diodes sitting here N p, N p. Okay. If I apply 0, 0 bias, it is still reverse bias. And if I have positive V d s and 0 here, I am having a stronger reverse bias. So, both diodes are reverse biased okay. and a reverse biased diode gives reverse saturation currents, is that correct? Since they are giving a reverse saturation currents, there will be a current from source to drain, which is called the leakage currents. The off state is not always normally recognized when VGS is 0. We say when VGS input is 0, no current, we say off. But in this case, VGS was 0, but some finite current may be very small, pico amps sometimes nano amps. Okay. In present case, it is becoming tens of nano, uh, hundreds of nano amps reaching micro amps now. That is our worry now in 11 nanometers, 16 nanometers. So, this means that there is a leakage path. This we normally do not want to consider in analog design because we say it is very chota current, chota. But in digital, this may hurt your health, particularly in DRAM designs, this is what it will kill you. Okay. So, one must say that V j 0 normally transistor should have been turned off, but in now newer technologies this is not necessarily can be called turned off. Okay. As I say it is called problem area which is called partially on case. Okay. Is that okay? V g s equal to 0 normally one believes device is switched off, but if V d s exists there will be a leakage current which is essentially always available. So, this is another problem which digital people are more worried, not that we are not worried. So, this is a issue which uh, we will not deal too much in analog designs. Okay. Now, here is the case 3, I have V s grounded, V b grounded fine, V b s is 0. I apply V g s which is finite that means finite means it can be positive or negative, but not 0. This is equivalent case of a mass capacitor. If this is grounded, this is grounded, this is grounded, it is like equivalently saying you have a mass capacitor metal oxide semiconductor acting like a mass capacitor. So, obviously, a mass transistor theory must actually emanate from the behavior of a mass capacitor. So, here is a mass capacitor shown, three voltages I can apply to V g, one I can apply negative, other I can apply positive, but small and third time I will apply positive, but relatively large value. So, three values I will choose, one V g s negative, second I will say V g s positive, but small and third I say V g s positive and large, relatively large, do not say large means 100, larger than normal. Okay, so, first we say V g s negative. If I apply negative 
voltage on this metal plate. Please remember this is metal can be silicon also act like a poly, polysilicon can act like a metal therefore, it is a metallic word we use. So, if I apply a minus V g on the metal plate with reference to the bulk which is grounded then the Gauss's law does not like this system to remain like this ek plate pe charge. Okay. It says that across the loop of V g to the ground the net charge must be 0 I mean that is the system must be in equilibrium. Okay. If that has to happen the char there is no charges in insulator that is what we said right now. So, if there are no charges in insulator then whatever voltage I apply which creates a charge minus q m on the gate I must get opposite polarity charge in the semiconductor which is exactly same but opposite polarity such that q m plus q s must be equal to 0 because the net charge around the loop should be aapke dasvi aathvi se yeh sawal aapko bar bar poochha ja raha hai electrical mein m tech aane ke pur bhi yehi sawal hai nothing more okay. is that ok. That means, if q m is negative q s has to be positive which is now how do I get a positive charge one sees that the device started with a piece of substrate. So, it has a certain number of hole density already available to you, but this is universal everywhere constant n e is q n e ok. n e is the doping concentration in substrate. So, those many holes are available everywhere, but at the surface I want additional holes because that is what you said minus q m requires additional positive charge. So, some way the holes must start coming near the interface the word is interface between SiO2 and silicon or insulator and silicon or semiconductor the line here is called interface at the interface you must get extra holes. Now, from where they can come this substrate is good enough for you it will start providing larger holes at the surface, but does that mean that the substrate will get depleted of holes no battery you have applied battery will give you that those addition. So, because of this why this can holes have to go upwards if you look at very carefully if this is minus V g with reference to ground which is the direction of electric field upwards plus to minus. So, obviously, holes move in the direction of electric field. So, holes move up okay. and the sub additional holes which we are asking will be actually coming from power supply. So, that the thermal equilibrium value of concentration in P remains constant though holes are actually picked up from the substrate itself the loss will be supplied by the battery or whichever go up. Now, these many holes will only come as much as the charge you put on the metal. So, every time equilibrium q m plus q s is constant is maintained. So, if I have larger minus v g then what will happen larger holes will come. So, you can say larger negative voltage I apply larger accumulation of holes starts at the interface this is essentially accumulation mode we have accumulated holes we have a p type and we are accumulating positive charge. So, we say we are in a region of accumulation mode. So, in a MOS capacitor with P substrate with minus V g s you are always in accumulation mode battery always supplied charge cannot be created from air you know. So, it has to be taken from battery. Now, the third case I said or second case I said V g s is positive, but not very large very small amount, but positive. Now, if I see that very small positive value ok let us look at this if I apply V g s positive and small. So, I am putting small q m at the metal now by Gauss's law we now expect semiconductor interface to get negative charge because q m plus q s is constant con is 0 is what Gauss says Gauss is a god for us if he says so it is we agree with it. Yeah, almost so many years no one has proved Gauss law wrong okay. not even perturbation on it there are many things in weak weak fields strong weak fields many things are coming both on toss on, but no one has challenged Gauss's law so far. Okay. Okay, so, if q s is negative, but the substrate is p type 
substrate is p type. Now, I want negative charge to occur. So, we said ok, if you look at this way now, the electric field in semiconductor is now downwards, positive VGS, so field is downwards. So, holes can move in the direction of electric field. So, holes near the interface actually move away. As soon as in a semiconductor positive charge holes move away, what we say it gets that region gets ionized with a negative acceptors and this region is depleted of free charges of holes. Is that clear? Therefore, the region is called depletion region. So, we now get into this that we see depletion region. Now, this depletion region will enhance because it is a charge density issue. If you increase charge, the charge area is same. So, charge density of QM increases. If QS has to increase, its thickness must increase because otherwise equivalent charge density cannot be created. So, larger the positive VGS group, depletion layer thickness or width as may be called will also enhance, okay, also enhance to get same charge as you are putting on the metal. So, you remain in depletion as long as that condition is happening that Q s is to be supplied through depletion charge. Okay. Okay, so, this mode we will call as depletion mode. As I say many of you have learned this is recapitul recapitulations because we need to understand device little better for analog. Let us say V g s is further positive and little better than substantially higher. Now, this value how much we will see later when we say it is more than threshold. Okay. That word threshold is what we want to define now. Okay. Certain value of VGS suddenly we find things will change and that will, that we are exceeding that voltage right now as if. Okay. So, if you apply VGS positive large so relatively large still keep VDS 0, VS 0, VBS 0 fair enough. So, you are still a capacitor and you say VGS is large, large positive charge requires large negative charge. So, what could have happened that this in thickness of the depletion layer should keep enhancing because what is the depletion charge can anyone say I have already written somewhere if not oh yeah here Q N A X D, X D means depletion layer width this X D increases, so N A is constant. So, Q N A X D keep on increasing to adjust the extra charge you are asking for. So, the semiconductor charge is increasing with increase of X D in depletion. This surface potential psi s word which I have not stated somewhere may be we all can use a fresh sheet. This you should understand something like this. You have a capacitor If I apply uh, this is semiconductor, this is insulator. If I apply some voltage, call even V across this, this is insulator, the semiconductor, V must be equal to V ox plus semiconductor potential. This is Ohm's law, your divider, you apply voltage to areas, part divisions. Okay. So, obviously, the potential in the semiconductor is defined in terms of psi s and potential across oxide which we want to find soon is called oxide drop. Okay. So, if I increase say let us call V g either this will increase or this will increase or both will increase or one of them will increase is the game we are trying to play is that correct is that point clear either each one of them will increase or both may increase or both may not increase, which are the cases of relevance. Okay. So, this potential drop between two regions is we call it surface potential. Why it is called surface? Because charge is only near to the interface. So, potential will change only where by go, uh, which law it potential appears because of charge, which law is the very famous which relates voltage to uh, potential to the charge, Poisson's equation. Poisson's law says d by dx is minus rho by epsilon E is the electric field, x is one direction but multi direction rho by epsilon. 
epsilon is the permittivity. Rho is the charge density. Okay. So, larger the charge, larger is the electric field, electric field is minus dV by dx. So, larger the field, larger is the potential. Is that clear? So, we say voltage increase surface potential can only occur when there is a charge available to you. Is that clear? This is Poisson's law or Poisson's equation. So, because of these, as I say, fundamental Maxwell's equations, which are still standing strong. Electrical engineers are strong. Okay. okay. So now, if I say, if I keep increasing VGS, psi s will also increase. But I figure it out that there is at some potential VGS equal to call it VT now. Okay. The surface potential becomes what we call as twice the Fermi potential. Some other day maybe device theory may be more detailed to talk, but not today. And Fermi potential is given by kT by q ln Na by Na. Na is the intrinsic carrier concentration, Na is the accepted concentration. <coughs> so, if larger the Na, phi f is larger. Okay. So, for a when psi s reaches 2 phi f, one can now say that this 2 phi f x t becomes maximum. Actually, we will see this is only 1 phi f should have happened, but we say okay, 2 phi f x t becomes constant. If x t becomes constant and maximum, then the charges due to depletion layer are fixed now, but you are increasing V g s beyond that value, then what will happen? From where? Because depletion layer cannot enhance now. You said it, so that is the very definition you are putting. That means, there must be another source of negative charge. This additional source of negative charge is always available day 1 actually, but was not so dominantly talked initially, but now suddenly we realized. We figured out that every semiconductor whether it is a depletion layer or normal thermally equilibrium areas, electron hole pairs are constantly generated. Is that clear to you? This is thermal generation, nothing I can do. Recombination is constantly done. That is why NAs are constant, so many holes can be given. Okay. If law of mass action has to agree every time, thermodynamics cannot be violated in thermal equilibrium, then electrons and holes are going to be created everywhere. Even when VGS was smaller, uh, positive. There were whole electrons there also in the depletion layer. Here also there were whole electrons. What has happened there? Which side because of the electric field, which carriers in this in this upper region, let us say the other region they will recombine because this is a neutral region. In the depletion region, the whole electrons now see electric field, okay. which is the electric field downwards, which carriers will move away holes. So, the electrons can be made available, but at this time we say electrons are not there very much. Why we said because this electric field is so small that they could not separate whole electrons before they recombine. They are recombining everywhere, so is in the depletion layer. The electric field which could have separated, what is the electric field charge? It gives a force, is that a q into this is the force, it q into E is the electric force. If your E is smaller, the force on carrier is smaller. So, before they separate, they combine. Okay. So, if they recombine, there is no additional electrons available to you because whole electrons recombine. However, in now when you have increased VGS sufficiently, this electric field is very high because that is what VGS you applied, size is very high now. Okay. At that electric field, now, you say depletion layer is not increasing fine, but these electrons and holes can be separated because of additional higher electric field in the semi semiconductor surface. The holes will move downwards and electrons will move which side towards the interface as they separate. So, more and more electrons start getting near the interface as you increase VGS. Is that correct? Because now depletion cannot give you additional negative charge 
additional charge must come because gauss will not allow you to do otherwise and therefore negative charge must come from free carriers electrons okay you started with a p substrate you create at a layer of free carriers electron carriers so you say you are inverted p type the layer at the top or interface layer is now n type okay and therefore you say you are in a region of inversion is that correct so larger the vgs now you put larger will be inversion charge because and that will be supplied by whom by this thermally generated carriers which get separated now if i solve such poisson's equation for this one can see by of course as i say theory i'll not say the inversion charge due to this thermally generated case is proportional to e to the power q psi s by kt which means very small change in psi s can create larger negative charge if you look at my uh, this expression for depletion q n na xd but xd is proportional to psi s but which relationship it is showing root of psi s the in earlier depletion charge is proportional to root psi s but inversion charge can be created e to the power q psi s by k t so obviously exponential functions are stronger than root functions so you don't need now too much change in psi s to get this additional bulk charge or called depletion charge but that additional charge may now come from the electron hole pair separation which is going exponential with change in psi s okay so all the additional charge will be now supplied by this separated charges free charges and therefore depletion layer will become constant with a pinch of salt it will keep increasing a bit of it let's say 0.1% is from that and 99% from that may go it's not that it will not but ratio as you say all of it is now coming from free electrons available through inversion layers uh, through in the inversion layer this is the crux of mos transistor now we say vgs equal to vt this occurs the definition we said that at psi s becoming 2 5 actually at when psi s becoming 5 the material will become intrinsic you can put substitute this value and you say material will be intrinsic so it will not p type there at the surface is not p type so it is intrinsic but then there are very few electrons so we don't want that many we want larger number of how many electrons i say is good enough for me at least as much as the holes did below where so if this electron density is same as what the holes density i started with i say i have sufficient electrons available so i say good inversion layer and that would be good we say strong inversion so from psi s equal to 5f to 2f inversion is already available but very less number of electrons available as you reach to 5f huge number of electrons can be created because it's a exponential function you can see exponential function initially it rises slowly and then shoots shoots up that procedure is same here so initially you see lesser charge but then it shoots the larger charge this fact is being utilized here that at little bit higher psi s 25 is the number we gave the depletion layer now will become constant whatever for 25f and we'll say rest of the charge will come from the free electrons generated through thermally that's why we say threshold voltage is defined at that point where psi s is 25 is that correct it's called strong inversion now there is a catch there between psi s equal to 5 psi s is related to vgs vgs equal to psi s plus v ox if psi s changes we know as vgs changes psi s is changing we say between 5 and 2 5 device is still not off it is on is that clear to you why it is on because electrons are made available to you this means this region is called weak inversion and this is also called sub threshold region one of the way analog circuit will be designed is using sub threshold character vgs less than vt but it's not switched off it's not zero there is a weak inversion going on and that region itself can be utilized in some devices some circuits 
most cases will not use it. We will see that psi s is 2 phi f strong inversion is set in more and more carriers will come from VGS now all of it go to psi s and psi s will increase as much charge as you want on the equivalent of q n. So, the way the mass capacitor works and therefore, mass transistor works is that there is a threshold voltage at which this can occur is that correct. This since at this the as I said this figure since this channel can be created somewhere here if Vs is positive like this and Vds is also positive then there is a possible this is a like a resistor n channel n area is like a semiconductor n bar some conductivity it has this is source grounded this is drain positive voltage this is like a piece of semiconductor with two contacts what current it will flow ohms law V is I R depending on the R here current will flow. So, a MOS transistor gives you a current which is proportional to V which is very interesting ok, but later we figure out it is not linearly going. So, then how what, what makes it change we will see next time. I hope that uh, those who have not done device course in their careers or not done the course the way IITians think they should do. I said the initial availability in a capacitor is essentially because of the minority carriers. However, when I make a transistor, I have a source of electrons, infinite source. So, the electrons will actually come from the source and not from the minorities. Minority will keep that channel, but the current which will pass will be sub carrier supply. Otherwise, you know one time this carriers will be swept off. So, the carriers which are required to maintain a channel will always be supplied in a transistor by source electrons that is why it is called source. I will keep giving you electrons as many you want and this is n plus means heavily doped infinite carriers ok. So, I will keep supplying you any number of current carriers required, but the channel will be maintained essentially because of the VGS minus VT available is that clear. This inversion cannot be done from source side it can only be done from gate side. So, the inversion layer maintenance is because of the minority charge, but the charge movement is supplied from source to drain by the source is that clear. Oh, all the carriers there are thermally generated there is nothing else ok. Inversion layer is always thermally generated carriers ok is that ok. Metal is insulated by from the semiconductor. Na? There is an oxide, so nothing it can do below. Is that clear? No, no, how can the current can through move through insulator? Oh, you mean like this? Oh, but that is the circuit anyway. Circuit the that is what I say. Cur finally, carriers through source from where it is coming through battery. There is no other source of carriers. Carriers can only appear from a battery, there is no other source. Okay. Is that okay?